How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week 12. We've got a bye here before our game against South Alabama. Uh, that'll be a home game. So we've got a lot of recruiting to do in this episode, so we're not going to waste any time. We will just jump right into it and uh, get these points in. We have a lot to, to give away. Uh, Ashton Keith, the 79 overall defensive end. All of a sudden... We are really far up there. The only team to offer him a scholarship. I think something isn't right with the rest of these teams if we're going to be able to pick up. Um, gosh, at this point, it looks like maybe uh, 77, a 78, and a 79 overall. How about Brian Davis? Low chances for the 76, though. Four guys are ready for visits, though, including Brian Davis. So I want to go ahead and get those scheduled. Uh, I think everybody's going to come or have to come at this South Alabama game. Otherwise... They'll be at a bye week. Um, so we're going to stack up some visits against the Jaguars. And then we will head over to our uh, normal spot of looking at deficits and assigning points based on that. Eric Howard isn't going to be worth it. We're down a bunch. We're not able to catch up. And he's just not the best player. Uh, with Tom West, we've both had our visits. We're down 330. We can give a little bit more. We'll see. Maybe we can make it to the uh, postseason and pick him up, but I'm not confident. Same thing with a lot of these guys. We need a really good visit uh, with Brian Davis to make sure that we don't get beaten out by Rutgers for the 76 overall D tackle. Uh, Cole Lambert, what was he? 66 overall at the guard spot. We'll give him 500 points. Basically, anybody who we have a deficit with is getting the 500. And now we can just look for... Uh, Let's go by percentage locked. Um, and we'll just give points to guys who aren't very locked. Or who are very locked. No, we'll go, we'll go to the bottom by like least lock percentage so that we can try to get those guys to start uh, committing. I think that makes maybe some sense. Uh, and then that's going to do it. We do have a spot open on the board. Uh, so we'll look to fill that for next week. And uh, we can just sim through this quick. And as a quick look again at uh, the teams that are playing, we're just going to look for ranked games this week. There's a couple of them. We've got uh, 13 Ohio State, or sorry, 11 Ohio State playing 17 Penn State. Um, is that the only ranked matchup this week? It is. Uh, did anybody lose? We Yeah, we, we saw some stuff. We saw like Penn State and Florida losing, but... Uh, Nothing nothing really seems like it's going to happen this week, unless it's big upsets. So we'll go ahead and head towards week 13 for this game against South Alabama and see what happens in the bye week. So here we go. Uh, we get a commit from the quarterback, David West, which is good. Grayson obviously will still start. He's going to be around for a while. Um, but we can start to redshirt David and, and have maybe a backup win. Grayson gets hit or maybe a replacement when he leaves. Unfortunately, Tom West, the free safety, will be going to South Carolina. We get Wendell Whitlock, a 65 overall defensive tackle, two commits, and a 60 overall in Matt Hodges. I We should have taken him off the board, but it's a right tackle. Um, maybe some depth at the line. Who knows? He's definitely getting redshirted, if not just cut. So we are into week 13. We've got South Alabama up uh, as the next team we are on a two loss streak we need to bounce back here hopefully the bye gave us a little bit of a chance to recover and prepare for this game and we've got a decent amount of guys visiting already i think it's like five or six with joe bush the fullback potentially coming this week as well so adding one more to that list we have one player not scouted that's the running back that we just added uh he's a power back but i believe he's gonna be pretty quick a lot of good teams looking at him, but he was kind of low lock. We have, honestly for us, terrible bonus points, but it's just better than a lot of the other stuff that I saw. Is he good? He goes down to 69 overall. 91 speed, 80 acceleration. Uh, Nothing that I'm seeing is incredible, but it's you know not the worst back that we've seen. It maybe explains why he's not getting recruited heavily. Uh, Nobody on his board has offered him a scholarship yet, and we want a running back, so we'll go ahead and offer him that. We can take Tom off since he's committed elsewhere. And then again, we'll just be giving points to people. And I mean, really, it's just giving Dante the 400. Uh, maybe coming to 
some of these other guys in, in just maneuvering the points around, but I'm totally fine with what we've had. Uh, except maybe let's... No, uh, I'm totally fine. We have so many guys already committed. We're definitely filling out the board. I, I might need to uh, actually go through and take off players that we don't want. We we just are doing so well in, in picking up the guys that we have on the board. Maybe I take off guys like JJ Barr or, or, you know, lower overall guys. One of the two fullbacks could probably uh, be taken off, especially, especially since we have leads. Like, you know, do we want Joe or JJ? Um, so that sort of decision making. But we'll look quickly at ESPN. Uh, we have awards finalists. We've got a lot of stuff. Uh, so we'll actually uh, see what we've got going on. Did any teams take stupid losses? Oregon, number five in the country, playing a number 16 Washington on the road. They've got to go to Seattle. Uh, Ohio State beat Penn State. That was our one ranked matchup from last week. But here is an update. North Carolina lost to Notre Dame, which to be fair, this Notre Dame team is, you know, vastly underperforming on the season. But they take out the Tar Heels. And so a top five team falls by a touchdown. Notre Dame now ranked. And elsewhere, um, Texas Tech took a loss to Kansas State. So that's pretty interesting. We're still not receiving votes. Arkansas, TCU, and Houston drop out of the rankings. A chance that they also took some losses. And this is going to be the one that matters to us the most right now. Bowl projections. Where do they say that we're playing? Is it just going to be a bowl that we're like, okay... Or is it something that we can be excited about? We're scrolling down away. What is this going to be? The Lending Tree Bowl against Toledo. I gotta say, nah, I'm not happy with it. <laughs> As it stands, our national championship game, since we don't have the playoff yet, uh, it looks to be between undefeated Miami and undefeated Michigan. But we need to win out the rest of these uh, or these next two games. Also, we might be in trouble with our conference. Since we only have two games for most uh, teams left, let's go through real quick and check out our conference standings again. We currently are behind Appalachian State in the Sun Belt. So we need them to lose and we need to continue to win. And even then, I don't, we, we almost need them to lose two in a row here. So we might not be surviving and winning the Sun Belt, which would be a shame. The ACC Atlantic looks to be going Clemson's way with Miami most likely winning the Coastal. In the American, it is a tie between UCF and Cincinnati, both undefeated in conference with Houston, maybe looking to jump up in there. The Big 12 sees Texas and Oklahoma on top with West Virginia down at 5-2, and two, looking to sweep in as well. That's a high-ranking uh, top three for the conference. The Big Ten East is Michigan, obviously number two doing really well, but Ohio State... Is probably looking to spoil their dreams of the season. And then the West, it's Minnesota tied with Nebraska um, for the division. The CUSA East is Middle Tennessee State by two games. Clear of the lead there. And then the West of the conference, it's a tie between North Texas and Southern Miss. Our independents are doing okay. 6-3 and three Army, 7-4 BYU, 7-4 and four Notre Dame. In the MAC East, Ohio has a lead over Buffalo and the rest of the teams. And in the West, it's a tie between Northern Illinois and Central Michigan. The Mountain West Conference, the Mountain Division, is being held by Wyoming, who's currently 9-1 in 17th in the nation. And in the West Division, it's Hawaii. They're at 19th. So... Mountain West, the top of the conference, looking pretty strong. The Rainbow Warriors also 9-1 so far on the season. Now we've got the Pac-12 North. We know that Oregon's in the lead, number 5 in the country, 9-1 on the season. 7-0 in conference, but they're playing number 16, Washington. So a very big game uh, with Pac-12 title implications on the line. And then the South, it's a 9-1, number 14, Arizona State, leading by a game over number 6, USC. The SEC East, we've got South Carolina, uh, number seven in the country, eight and one in the conference with the lead. Florida trying to fight their way back into SEC championship game contention. And in the West, it's the Auburn Tigers, 
uh, leading the way, followed by Ole Miss and Bama. Five and five on the season. They're a 97 overall team, three and four in conference. That is not a good look. So we know it's at stake for us. We have to win. Um, but what can it go well for us? Seven prospects visiting. They're a B minus team, which does not bode well because we've been struggling against C overall teams. We have the edge for the most part, except for the rankings. Oh my gosh, South Alabama looks very good ranking wise for a five and four team. Who have they played? Uh, lost a close one to Mississippi State, beat Kent State, lost to Georgia, beat Georgia State. Won a close one against a pretty terrible Louisiana Monroe. Lost to the Texas State team that we lost to. Beat Arkansas State. Beat Georgia Southern. Lost to Louisiana Lafayette. And now it's up to us. And they still play Appalachian State. So we need them to beat the Mountaineers desperately. Both of our teams locked in here at 81 overall. With the Jaguars' slight deficit on offense our 83 to their 77 but they've got the 83 to our 80 on defense go ahead and wear well we wore the all black last time let's go with the mostly black this time kind of liking the idea maybe of the teal pants let's go with that look that's pretty fresh and south alabama Again, not an updated team. I want them to wear the, the blue pants here. So we'll face off against USA. So South Alabama, again, middle of the road. Pretty pretty mediocre on offense, but like pretty solid. Top 35 defense. Uh, our offense has struggled all season long, and the defense uh, just turns into Swiss cheese at a moment's notice. Guys visiting, I'm not going to worry about the recruiting goals. They're top players, mid-80s overall, so we realistically have a more talented team. They just have a little bit more depth. Uh, and they've got a left guard out with a forearm fracture. They're hoping he comes back for the bowl game, but he's not playing in this one. It is a nice sunny day here at Brooks Stadium in Conway, South Carolina. We'll see what we can do as South Alabama picks tails and loses the toss. We're going to elect to kick this one off. So Massimo has this game underway. I put this one in a spot where they could return it because I'm curious to see if we can maybe get them in bad field position or if we can screw it up and let them get past the 25 anyways. They're coming out with two tight ends or I guess a tight end and a fullback on this first down so we'll expect their rush and we'll bring the blitz we'll see if we can do anything they step back to pass though and the quarterback takes the sack as the pressure gets to him the way that our defense has played the past few games they've got a lot to prove here is this going to be a play action quarterback scrambling and we're gonna hit him and just make sure that we wrap up the tackle gave up 10 yards but it's third and six we had pretty good coverage there but had the quarterback too much leeway and the running back doesn't have anything we get him at the line of scrimmage and the defense holds on the first drive that's a rarity for us so we'll get to see Diggs pretty early here on the punt return again only two return touchdowns on the season which is down from like seven last year so really looking to get something going as Diggs is getting some blocks and gets us across midfield, hoping that there's no penalties on the play. We're starting this game across the 35 on offense. Let's hope that we can do something good here because the offense has struggled. Uh, just letting Reese pick up the carry on first down. And we will try the read option on second and seven. Uh, Reese going to keep it again. No, I tried to hand it off. I guess I just didn't hold down the button long enough. So we lost two yards and it's third and nine. So we'll hope for the best on this one. Kind of looking for Javon Hiley. But we'll see. Hiley is open. I was late to throw it though. Fourth and nine. I hate to do this because we always do, but I'm kicking the field goal. Just feels like we never come away with the points that we should. This kick is just barely inside the uprights, but hey, we're taking a lead. Which I feel like it's been a while since we've done that. And Georgia Southern beat Appalachian State. Oh, that is fantastic. The Mountaineers still have two games to go. If we win out, we could potentially win the conference. That is fantastic news for us. Spiscardi is just going to put this one out of the back of the end zone. I, I don't even want to let them return it. On first down, they will step back to pass. Dang it, I saw the 
curl coming from the tight end, but couldn't get there in time. We're going to take a big risk on the safety blitz here on second and two, expecting this to be a run. Put the receiver in motion. Wait, the, their tight end was lined up uh, five yards offside again, so they get the false start. That's going to back them up. How, how did I not even notice that? I guess we don't need to bring the blitz if that happens. Maybe one of the problems with all these teams consistently running the hurry up against us as this one is just going to miss its mark. Desmond Trotter couldn't find his man, and it's third and seven. This man coverage is working pretty well so far, as I'm kind of expecting this to be a screen. Maybe not with the tight end in motion. They step back to pass, and they find the running back, and he breaks one tackle but can't break the other, so the defense holds for the second drive in a row, and we might be able to open up a lead. Just need Diggs to continue to give us the good field position to help uh, with the defense or with the offense's struggles. And it looks like, yeah, very returnable ball. If we can get some blocking, we can be looking good on this one. Diggs makes a man miss, and Aaron has the kicker to beat, who took a terrible angle. Number three, the diving tackle missed, and Aaron Diggs for his second punt return touchdown of the season is in for six. It's 10-0 Coastal. Oh, could we finally have a blowout in our favor? It seems like the bye week has been pretty useful as we've come out strong at 10-0 with 239 left in the first quarter. If the defense can continue to just get off the field, I'm going to feel very confident about this one. Definitely expecting the run on first and 10, expecting a run to the left. It is to the left. We're there with the pressure, but nobody can get the tackle, so the safety mats has to come up and stop it from becoming a whole lot more... It always hurts when you know exactly what the play is and you make some adjustments for it, but nothing comes of it. There's another first down. Maybe they're going to try to be doing a lot of running. Porter getting stiff-armed. His tackle's broken, and that is gone. Nobody's going to be able to catch him. Spill him isn't fast enough, and South Alabama answers back very quickly with a long Carlos Davis touchdown run. So the second that I start to praise the defense, they let me down, but... Diggs has a chance to return, and this ball is going to be fielded at the three. So if the blocking is good, which it's not, dang it. Could have been something big. All right, it's up to our offense to go down and score again. See what we can do running the ball on first down. White's able to fall forward for two. It looks like they're bringing a big blitz. Not really any deep safety, so we're going to step back to pass. And I took the sack. Didn't have time to get the throw off. It's third and long. So we really need to do a lot here to pick up the first down on third and 16. They're bringing some pressure again. But maybe over the middle, we have the tight end McFarlane who held on to through some weird contact but didn't get enough. We'll go for this on fourth and inches. If you think, you know, somewhere across the 35 fourth and inches that we're not going to scramble or sneak McCall, you're foolish. Grayson has it, no problem. Gets four yards and the offense can stay on the field. We'll try the read option here for the second time this game. So we're about 30 seconds left in the first quarter, and Grayson had a lot of room. He had a ton of blockers in front, but just one guy snuck behind him. I'm looking to pass on this second down. A little play action outside the pocket. Let's go safe to Tyson Mobley, who gets the first down, but unfortunately stepped out of bounds with a lot of blue in front of him. We're going to run this one to the right. We'll bring Isaiah Likely in motion a little bit of extra blocking on that side. And it works out well. Gives Reese a lot of room to work with, and he gets seven yards. And that's going to end our first quarter. So we have a lead. Uh, Diggs bailing us out with some really, really good special teams play, including a punt return for a touchdown. We hit a field goal. And our defense has done pretty good. Uh, two of three on their stops for the the three drives that they've been out there is impressive to me Grayson keeping this one and sliding down for a quick first down I, I gotta be more safe running those read options see if we can catch them napping as we're looking for the seams and this is a terribly risky throw but we use her Tyson Mobley into a safer position to catch it and we get a very fast 18 yards on that play so this uh, drive has been going pretty well in this quarter as Reese makes a nice little cut to the left, finds some space and gets six more yards. 
Trevon Highly coming in motion on second and four as we will step back to pass. Risky throw. Didn't get really anything as we went to the tight end. I was late to find that one in the safety. Did, good, did a good job uh, coming up and making the stop as on third and four. We're going to hand this one off to Reese who I would try to bounce it back to the right, honestly, but couldn't get it done and it's fourth and two. I feel like I'm always making this mistake and choosing wrong on these plays, but on fourth and two, we're going to step back to pass. I hit the wrong button. Oh, I hit what the X button would be on the Xbox instead of on the PlayStation. And we throw the pick. I meant to throw that to uh, our man crossing right over the front. Just hit the wrong button and the drive ends poorly. One of those problems where I've played this uh, on Xbox for so much that I just kind of get confused on buttons every once in a while. Embarrassing to say the least, but inexcusable. Maybe the defense can bail us out as they pick up the sack there on first down. Expecting to see a handoff here on second and 17. They motion the tight end. And I'm using a defensive lineman, I guess. Quarterback scrambling. Bowmore gets the diving tackle. It's back-to-back -back sacks. Three on the defense for this uh, game. So it brings up a third and 18. The defense shouldn't have a problem defending this. We know it's going to be a pass. We just have to defend that first down marker. And we give the middle of the field up, but we know that we're going to get the stops. The defense now three of four on getting stops so far in this game. And if you're South Alabama, you're definitely worried about punting it away uh, because you're losing this game, even though your offense has gotten more total yards than, than we have. And I don't know what the deal with that was. Diggs just kind of ran away from the ball uh, when I wanted to return it. But we get the touchback and we get another chance to run a read option. This feels like a decent opportunity as McCall gets six yards on first down. Second and four, stepping to back to pass after throwing the interception last time. We find Javon Hiley across the 35-yard line. Play action. Grayson looking to the air on this one. Nobody open. Going to have to scramble and we'll slide down just to get positive yards on the play. I do have to be aware of the clock. We have all three of our timeouts, but we are ticking below two minutes now as we'll look to the air. Another play action, and over the middle we have Bedgood, and Bedgood made a man miss, and he's gone. Aaron Bedgood, the 10, the 5, and he's in for 6. The 59-yard touchdown pass. Oh, man, what a mistake from the safety there as we will open up a 10-point lead with a minute and 48 to go in this first half. Try to continue to use this man defense as we expect them to run and or pass, sorry, and it worked too well. Uh, the tight end got me with the move. We were running the two man under because I wanted the extra safety, but uh, obviously I need that help over the middle of the field. So first down, we are trying not to give up a touchdown on the drive. The out route is there. Corey or Derek Bush making a great stop. It'll stop the clock, bring up a second and 10. Again, we know that these are going to be passes. The question is, can we stop them? Um, well, they're running the ball there. We're going to take the timeout. It's third and 12. Our defensive line has done a phenomenal job stopping the run, all things considered, so far in this game. Quarterback all the time in the world. He's throwing one up, hoping that it gets picked and strong. Well, he swats it away and brings up a fourth and 12. Would have loved an interception, though. That's the kind of pass that I get a little bit scared on just because I feel like a lot of times we get mossed on those, but it works out. And again, Diggs can be back to return. We will field this one at the 15, picking up one block, cutting it to the outside. Oh, but he gets pushed out of bounds at about the 35. So with a minute and 15 and two of our timeouts remaining, we'll see what we can do through the air. This is a risky throw and it's going to be picked off immediately. Oh no, we gave them the ball right back. Uh, with a couple extra yards, two turnovers now, two interceptions on the game. Uh, that, that was a foolish pass. Unfortunately, by giving them the ball at the 40, they're basically in field goal range now. So we have to hope that the defense can get the stop. And, well, there's another first down. At this point, we're just going to hope that we can hold them to a field goal. That's all I can expect. Another first down at clock at a minute to go. Are they burning this one down? No, there's the snap and the run, and they're going to lose a yard and take a timeout. They lost three yards, actually. 
So second and 13. If our uh, defensive line has this much ease the whole game long, we're going to be in a good shape. We're going to take a timeout now as it's third and nine. No, they took their second. So third down, we go to the cover three again. And oh, I accidentally went on to uh, a D lineman. And there's the tackle. We'll take the timeout. Fourth and three. We might have a chance still to score. They're going to come out to kick the field goal with 48 seconds left. Uh, I don't really expect any chance that we're going to stop this. The kick is up. And oh, he just barely snuck it inside. But they get three points. And it's a seven-point game now. But again... That puts Diggs back to return. So always dangerous uh, if you're the other team, especially if Diggs is having a good game because any time that you score, you're going to risk giving them the ball. And if we pick up a block on the kicker here, oh, so close. Maybe should have tried to juke that out, but across midfield we go. The Jaguars are lucky that uh, their defense has two turnovers on the game because otherwise they would be in big trouble, right? Oh, right there. Bed good in. 31 seconds. This is going to be a high scoring affair at this rate. 24 to 10. That was a quick drive. And the play action worked really well, but now our defense has to stop him for 31 seconds. So Biscardi will put this one in a fieldable position to help burn a little bit of the clock off. And we'll see if the coverage can get there. Ooh, they got a great return out of that. One timeout left on each side here. We'll see what we can do. They're going to step back to pass. Quarterback scrambling. I'm going to try to strip the ball any time that I see him running right now. Clock's going to be moving, though. Hoping that we don't see some sort of Hail Mary on this one. I don't think they're necessarily set up for it. Quarterback scrambles again. And trying to strip the ball, but he breaks a couple of tackles. This is dangerous. Thank goodness that the clock is triple zeros because Desmond Trotter just went out there and ran for 34 yards. But that'll be the end of the half. Thankfully, oh, got a little bit scary on that one. We can head into the locker room up 14 and getting the ball. And I got to say, a uh, pretty solid game all around aside from the two interceptions thrown from Grayson. One of them was because I made a terrible read on the throw and the other one I just hit the wrong button but our threat is back once again and Diggs with another chance man these are very returnable kicks is going to get out towards the edge diving tackle missed Diggs in a foot race he's not gonna have it all but he's got us across midfield again oh he's really trying to win that award here in the end of the season kind of hoping that their coverage is bad again as we go into the play action and we got a scramble. B is open. If we can get it deep enough, Javon Hiley, I threw it late, and that's going to be picked off. Oh, my gosh. He had a step on his man, but I was just late getting the pass off. So our third pick of the game. Thank goodness that we're winning this one because I would be so, so devastated. This is the exact reason why I avoid passing as much as possible uh, in, in most of our games is because uh, apparently I'm just terrible at it. We'll take what we've got here. Expecting a run. To the right, they hand it off. We're bringing the safety blitz. We can't get there quite in time, and they get enough for that first down. Try to go with the cover two sink on this first down. They've been in the hurry up. And again, the quarterback just missed his man, so easy stop for the defense on that play. Thank goodness that the defensive line has been doing as well as they have because they've kind of slowed that down. That's a quick uh, screen. I tried to screw it up by missing the tackle, but we got them down only a gain of three. And third and seven, expecting the pass. They will step back. We're waiting for it, and Gunter knocks his man out of bounds for a loss of three, and it's fourth and ten. The defense held again. Outside of the one big touchdown run that South Alabama had, our defense is playing lights out. Uh, we, we have not seen that so far this season. So I'm loving it as Diggs fielding another punt. Uh, didn't quite get enough blocks to get to the other side of the field. All right. We need to be safe here with the football. Uh, we've still got a 14-point lead. We're in the third quarter. Let's not throw another interception on this drive. Obviously, that doesn't mean that we're not going to pass it all. But I just can't be so stupid and careless with the football as... Oh my god, I... <laughs> oh, 
what am I doing? I'm sad. Actually, he's careless and stupid with the football. Four interceptions in the game. I'm the worst. I swear. I haven't been drinking tonight or anything. But we just continue to make these stupid plays. Uh, thankfully, they're really not that much better than us. Take away the... Uh, Special teams, maybe this is a closer game. We're bringing the blitz. We've got them in a third and four. Hit them at the line of scrimmage there. We'll try to bring another blitz on this one. That's going to be a run towards the edge. We're there with Porter. It's a loss of yards again. A lot of tackles for loss, and we'll hold them to a field goal here, which is honestly more than we should have, uh, you know, been able to do. You never know. They could also miss the kick. As on fourth and seven. The kick is up, and it's right down the middle. 24 to 13, an 11-point lead for us midway through the third quarter. I just, uh, I don't know. I don't want to throw again in this game. I know we're going to need to at some point, but I'm terrified. And I, you know, I can't blame it on Grayson McCall because it's me making the terrible reads. So we're just going to hope that the running game can work pretty well. And this likely goes in motion, and we will run on first down, and... Well, we got at least positive three yards. So that's better than nothing. Try the halfback dive on this second and seven. And White got another yard. And you see the situation now is that we're 0 of 3 on third downs on the game. And we have six yards to go. We can't run for that. So I had to pass. But passing has been so bad for us. And we just got sacked. The line got pushed back immediately. I had nothing I could do about it. We lose a bunch of yards. It's 4th and 12, and we've got to punt this one away. Thankfully for us, it seems like they're going to try to bring some pressure, so we're just going to get this so they don't have a chance to return, I think. I expect to see a fair catch, and there it is. So at least we got them back across the 30 on this drive. On this first down, they come out showing... And maybe it's going to be a run... Expecting maybe the counter to draw up the middle. Clark gets the tackle, only giving up three yards. Tempted to bring the blitz, but we're not going to on this one. And, well, maybe we should have. It's a great run up the middle. He's still on his feet. He got 12 yards there. Just kind of struggling to get the stop. They go to the air. I left my tight end wide open over there. Quarterback just missed <laughs> the man on the uh, little slant there. So we got bailed out. Thank goodness uh, Desmond Trotter is not a super accurate quarterback because we would be getting burned right now. So we give up five yards, but get the immediate tackle, and another third down comes for South Alabama. I'm absolutely expecting the run. As, or the pass, I meant to say. <laughs> as they do go, and they just beat me over the middle. Well, the defense starting to struggle a little bit. Bring a man in motion. We'll see if we can jump this snap. Quarterback looking to scramble. Oh my gosh, two missed tackles, and he's got a big first down. We can't strip the ball either, so they're inside the red zone. It's one of those plays where we know what's coming, and we just can't do anything about it. Quarterback back to pass again. Bush dropped the surefire pick six. Great play to deflect it, but I wanted the ball. When we're losing 4 nothing in the turnover battle, we need every turnover that we can possibly get and this is going to be a pitch to the edge we should be able to slow it down with mats if not just bring it down outright third and nine now just trying to make sure that we don't give up anything stupid we know it's going to be a pass over the middle in the end zone they have their man but they say he's out of bounds i hope they don't look at this because i think he was in no video review oh we got bailed out there so it's going to be another field goal attempt, luckily for us. And that kick is good. 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Our offense has been terrible. And UCLA beats, upsets number six, USC, 31-27. to 27. I need our special teams to bail us out here. Diggs has been one of the only bright spots, I feel like, uh, outside of, you know, most of our defense. And, oh, he was so close to being gone again. He gets his good field position, but now the offense gets to come out, and that's bad news. As foolish as this may seem, we're going to come out and start burning the clock here at the end of the third quarter because I'm not sure what else we can do. Um, That's the end of the third quarter, and uh, the way I see it is 
We're just going to continue to fail to move the ball, so we might as well take as much clock off as possible and hope that the defense can hold. We've got a second and seven where we'll hand the ball off again. And getting North Reese actually got a decent chunk of yards and gets us in a third down that we could pick this up. We'll see if it's available for the dive on third and three. Oh, for four on third downs for the game. Reese finally got us one just barely. Required maybe a good spot from the refs. Five minutes to go in the game now. I'm looking to hand this one off. I kind of thought that I was calling the bubble screen. I guess it's a draw, and I guess we're going to get great blocking, and Reese picks up another first down. That might be one of the best draw plays I've ever run in this game. So the clock continues to burn. They're going to start bringing a lot of pressure. Uh, but if we're able to continue to move the ball forward, even if it's only two yards, I'm happy with that. All right, we're running our mid-screen that I want to figure out how to get it to work because I know that this play has good potential. And I threw it earlier, and that didn't work either. So still learning. At least we get the clock to keep moving, but it's third and eight. And honestly, seeing as we are in field goal range, we're just going to kind of, or right on the edge of field goal range, we're going to try to just pick up some yards up the middle. We got it basically a yard, maybe less. And we're going to try to see if we can get this field goal attempt. This is a 59-yarder with no wind. We didn't get all the power, though. Oh, it was just short. If we go full power, for sure that we hit that. Unfortunately, we just are a little bit short. Like, that's like a yard. Oh, disappointing. So, again, it's me making a mistake on the execution. And uh, the defense has to come out and save my bacon again. Corner route worked way too well. Matt's needs to tackle the tight ends. And just like that, they're across the 25. See what we can do on the blitz on this first down. This is... I thought it was going to be a draw. No. Pressure gets to the quarterback. He's forced to throw it away. 222 left in the game, by the way. Try to make some adjustments. Ooh, they got us to jump, unfortunately, for them. No penalty going to be called there. They get five yards, but the clock will be moving, and it's third down again. We need to watch out for the quarterback scrambling, maybe a screen, something like that. But we're just going to hope that the defense can hold. Quarterback is scrambling. Can Shelton get there in time? He doesn't need to. Trotter gets tackled from behind, and it's fourth and one. Less than two minutes to play. And the South Alabama Jaguars are going to go for this play. I'm expecting a run to the right. They're going to step back to pass. It's a first and goal. Oh, that's a shame. They find Jalen Tolbert. The good news on this play is that uh, their clock is really starting to run th thin. A minute and a half left. I expect a run on this first down. It is going to be handed off. It's kind of a counter. Gunter had his tackle broken. And so did two other guys as Carlos Davis finds the end zone. And South Alabama has a chance to go for two to tie this game up with a minute and a half left. That's going to be a, that's going to be in. Shelton not able to get there in time. Two point conversions could it's tied up. Gosh, dang it. Well, let's hope that we don't throw an interception and lose this. And let's hope that Diggs can get under this one for a good return. Fielded cleanly at the 5. The blocking was okay. Diggs broke free a little bit. Oh my gosh, they had to knock him out of bounds, but we're at the 40. So a minute and 20 on the clock with all of our timeouts. We'll come out and see if we can run this ball, I'm actually going to run this counter the opposite direction. The blocking, decent to start, except it closed that gap so quick and we only got a yard. I really, really do not want to have to pass this ball, but I think we're going to need to. So, praying that I don't throw another pick. Let's make sure that we hit the right buttons, and that should be a catch to Javon Hiley. A little bit too high, so he's not able to get a whole lot more, but we're nearing that field goal range. In fact, 47 seconds to go. I think that we might be there uh, if the kick is strong enough. Grayson, please don't fumble the ball. Falling forward, got five on that one. So we're just going to continue to run the ball here. I see no reason not to. Reese getting a couple more yards. This is going to be a chance for us to kick the field goal to win. And here on third and two, we're going to run the counter to the other direction. And we lost some yardage, but fourth and four, we will have a chance to win this one with the field goal attempt. Just got to wait, and we take the timeout with three seconds to go. They're going to ice us. 
That's part of the biggest problem here. The 52-yard field goal. There's the timeout from South Alabama to ice our kicker. And Massimo Biscardi with a chance to win this. Otherwise, we go to overtime. Needs to hit this. I think we got all of it. But the kick. Oh, is it going to be good? It's so close. It's through the uprights. And Biscardi hits a game winner as the clock expires. 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Shown here left in the game. Oh my gosh. We got it done. 27-24. We bounced back from the losing streak. That was way closer than it should have been. Four interceptions is what we threw on this game. Still managed to come away with the win. Uh, we get XP, extra XP for it being a classic game. And, well, maybe uh, a little bit of extra points for the seven or nine recruits or however many came to visit this game. If I could hand the controller off to somebody else to throw my passes, I think that I would. Oh my gosh, there's some games where I don't do too bad and I don't make terrible decisions. And then there's games like this where I just like, I can't help it but throw bad passes. But anyways, around the country, uh, Bama took another loss. They are now with a losing record. I think they're five and six. Chance at not making a bowl. That would be pretty big. Game stat wise, they outrushed us. We can move the ball on the ground at all. Somehow we outpassed them, but they killed us on turnover battle. More first downs. We won the time of possession and... We did enough in that first half. Only scored three points. A single field goal in the fourth quarter to win the game uh, is, you know, all, all that we could do in that second half. But it's enough for the win, and a win's a win, and we can move on. Especially important that uh, Appalachian State lost their game this week. We need South Alabama now to go out and beat them. Carlos Davis is their player of the game, unsurprisingly. Offensively for us, it's Aaron Bedgood. Two receptions for 106 yards and two touchdowns. And Mason Shelton, the linebacker, had a, a sack. Uh, not a whole lot of big defensive plays other than, you know, some sacks, but nobody having a standout game necessarily. So too close of a game, definitely a nail biter. We'll advance the week here into our week 14 by. We backloaded the buys on the later end of the schedule, so we have plenty of rest for these last couple of games. And not only do we level up as head coach, but our offensive coordinator, Bodie Reeder, levels up, so that's pretty big. Uh, any commits? No commits. Nobody commits elsewhere, though, so that's fantastic. Finalists for the Thorpe, the best returner, the Nagurski, the best linebacker, the Benrick, and the Groza. Ton of XP. That's where the level up comes from. And we move to 8-3 and three on the season. Uh, we'll wait to do our coaching level ups and the rest of the recruiting uh, for next episode. But I do want to check the top 25 just to see what happened. We, we saw some stuff uh, as there will be some ranked games in the future. Oregon lost to Washington. They can't beat the Huskies. Oh my gosh, they got slaughtered. 19 to 41 they dropped five spots to number 10 washington though doesn't jump them only goes up four spots to number 12 so the huskies getting the short end of the stick there even though they're also leading the pac 12 north now ohio state lost to indiana which is kind of surprising and they have to play michigan this week i'm sure they'll spoil michigan's hopes and dreams usc lost to ucla minnesota lost to nebraska and are we receiving votes? We are. We're back receiving votes again as Texas Tech dropped out. We are currently ranked 31st, so we need a little bit more luck and, and another good win here and probably to win the conference to get ranked, but if we maybe win out and win a bowl game by the end of the season. We could see a number next to our name again. And one final look. Now we're looking at the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. So we'd go to New Orleans as opposed to like Mobile or wherever the other bowl that we were in was. Uh, lined up against Middle Tennessee State. So uh, a matchup I enjoy more. They're 9-2, and 7-0 and in their conference. Uh, maybe a decent battle there. But I still want something more prestigious. Unfortunately, this is going to be the end of this episode. We almost threw the game away, but thankfully... Uh, come away with the victory at the end of the day. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please, if you're not already, feel free to subscribe. Scroll down, hit the subscribe button. While you're down there, maybe hit like. 
and then mosey on down to the description where you can find links for our Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster, as well as links for our Twitch and community Discord. And if you're looking to get your hands on this college football revamped mod, there's a link for that down there as well. Again, though, thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to me. The support just continues to be absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so thank you for that. And with that being said, my name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. And wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. <laughs>